Hello, good evening, my dear. Tonight, we are welcome to Online Healing Crusade. <laughs> we are so glad to have you again on this platform. You know, uh, we believe that the Lord has been blessing you if you have been joining us for quite some time. But if this is your first time, this is Online Healing Crusade, and it takes place like this every day, 6 p.m. GMT plus one. Hallelujah. Uh, and once a week, you know, we have the Believer's Day. During this time, the word of the Lord is being taught. And I believe, um, if you're a believer, deep connected with you, the Lord is going to bless you. And the word that will come to life in the name of Jesus. You know, these are times that you need um, uh, the word of the Lord to strengthen your heart. And it is the word of the Lord that does it. And God sent his word to people. So I believe tonight, the word of the Lord will be coming to you to encourage you, to strengthen you. Hallelujah. As a believer, as a co-minister, you know, the servants of the Lord will be sharing with you. And I believe you are going to be blessed tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Join me to welcome the servants of the Lord. Evangelist Louis Ilufe Mugunari. As we bring the word of the Lord unto us again tonight in the name of Jesus. Stay tuned. Praise the Lord. Thank God for another opportunity to bring you the word of life today. I'm so excited coming on here to minister to you today. There is so much joy. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Be the bread of life in your word and minister to your people. And they share the bread, the loaf of bread, until everybody have their take in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Let's start from Isaiah chapter 61. The Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord, from verse 1, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn and to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the plantings of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities and the desolation of many generations. A stranger shall stand and feed your flock, and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God, and you shall eat the riches of the Gentile, and in thy glory shall be shall ye boast yourself. For your shame you shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I, the Lord, love judgment, I trouble thee for burnt offering, I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. <coughs> And their offsprings among the people, and all that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my soul shall be joyful, my God, for he hath clothed me with garments of salvation, he hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, and as a bridegroom decked himself with ornament, and as a bread that donneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her birth, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. That's Isaiah chapter 61, from verse 1 to 11. Now let's get into the New Testament and look at Luke chapter 4. <coughs> Luke chapter 4. From verse 1, and Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, and being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. 
Now let's jump a little. Let's go to verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out the fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogue, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captive and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he closed the book and gave it again to the ministers and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scriptures fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wonder that the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, it's not this Joseph's son. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, <clears throat> reading from the Old Testament, we see prophetic declaration by Isaiah. But when you read in the book of Isaiah, it looks like a general prophecy for everybody. But when you get in the book of Luke chapter 4, you see how Jesus found the place where that portion of scripture was written and then he read just a portion of it not all of it and then closed the book but now do something more spectacular said this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears <coughs> and um there's something i want to focus on on that subject today Maybe I, I should add another Old Testament portion. Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 1. I will stand upon my watch and set upon and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Do it tarry, wait for it, because if he surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is upright. is not upright in him, but the just <coughs> shall live by his faith. He's talking about revelation of our divine visions and purposes in life. Every man that God is going to use to do one thing or the other, they need to have a time like this when they will stand upon their watch and hear what God is saying unto them directly. There is a general plan of God. <coughs> there is a general calling. There is a great commission. That God has given to every man. <clears throat> Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth shall be baptized, he that believeth not shall be condemned. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name, they will cast out them. In my name, they will speak with new tongues. Are you here? <clears throat> they shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover and all that. General will of God. But I have to pray. I have to ask God some direct questions for him to be able to identify for me what exactly is going to be my area of calling. What have you sent me to this world to do? Every man should get to that point as a minister of the gospel where you ask God some specific and direct questions about your calling. It will help you to identify yourself. It will give you, you will solve the problem of identity, not knowing who you are or what you are to do and what God requires of you, and all that. You won't be copying anybody. You'll just be original, because you know what God has sent you to do. And that which God is going to reveal to you is what we call your divine purpose, or your life assignment, which I believe every man of God should have. Uh, at every junction in your life, you must be able to have exact understanding and knowledge of what will God have me to do in life? 
it's a very clear thing that we must not joke with. Are you getting me? <coughs> and our visions are very important to the rest of our life. Very, very important. <coughs> write the following thing down if you want to write. I want to talk to you about your visions in life. One, your vision requires your action. And then your vision will require people's reaction to you. Your vision requires your own action. And it will also cause people's reaction towards you. Your vision, if it's not actioned, will be auctioned. That is, if you don't put action to your vision, God will auction it out when you are still alive. He will say, he will say in your presence, who will I send? That's what he said to Isaiah. He said, who will I send now? Before Isaiah has to reapply and say, my Lord, I'm here. You're asking me, my son. I'm here. Where am I? Use me. But if he did not reapply, his vision is being unctioned in the presence. So whosoever apply at that time, God can give the same vision that intend to use Isaiah for. It can become somebody else's vision. Before that, chapter 6, he has written chapter 1 to 5. The end of his ministry may end up in chapter 6. And there are many prophets like that in the Bible that they wrote one or two or three, and that was all. Nothing again. Some even have only one chapter and didn't have a second chapter. The book of Jude. Just one. There are many other like that. Just one. So if, if, if you don't have any further revelation, then there's no, nothing to manifest. No manifestation when there's no revelation. When there's no vision, there's no mission. Your, your mission stops where your vision stops. And you get what I'm saying? So, uh, I pray that God will not unction your vision while you are alive in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The next thing I want you to write, your vision becomes your mission in life. Your vision becomes your mission in life. You cannot be a missionary if you are not a visionary. So if you don't have a vision from God, you can't have a mission. It is your vision that transforms you to a missionary. It is when you begin to execute your vision that you can say you have a mission. <coughs> because of what I have read to you in the book of Habakkuk, it also translates to the following. There are vision writers. There are vision seers. When people see a vision, there are vision seers. There are vision writers. There are vision readers. And there are vision runners. You know, the Bible says that uh, <coughs> write the vision. He said, I will watch to see what the Lord shall say unto me. So when you see that this, you have seen a vision. When you hear what the Lord is saying, you have heard. So there are vision hearers, vision seers, vision writers, vision readers, vision runners. So you write it down so that they may run that read it. So there are people, people will read it, there are people will run it. <coughs> there are vision quenchers. If your vision is like fire burning in your soul, may you never be 
mis mismated to somebody that is ice cold. An ice cold person joined with a person with fiery vision will become lukewarm. Because when you have hot with cold, it will neither be hot nor cold. And when it is lukewarm, that it is neither hot nor cold, God says, I will spoon you out of my mouth. I don't like that. I either take normal water or I take hot tea. I don't take lukewarm. So if it's one of the two, you talk it up. <coughs> vision quenchers. There are vision increasers. There are vision multipliers. There are vision amplifiers. Quenchers, increasers, multipliers, amplifiers. <coughs> Quenchers are people who put water on your fire. Everything you are saying about your vision, they are trying to discourage you. They are not trying to help anything to make what you are saying come to pass. Rather, they are pouring water on your petrol. <coughs> there are also vision helpers. There are vision publishers. There are vision proclaimers, there are vision admirers. I take that again. There are vision helpers, there are vision publishers, there are vision proclaimers, there are vision admirers. I hope you are writing them down. Each one of them, I have a lot to say about them. But today, I just want to download as many of it as possible for you. <coughs> there are vision supporters. There are vision builders. There are vision partners. There are vision mockers. Are you getting it? Supply, supporters, partners, builders, and mockers. There are visions. Uh, pollutants who pollute people's vision. There are vision corruptors. There are vision destroyers. There are people who bring division to your vision. Division. They bring division to division, that is, they are dividing it. <coughs> it's wonderful. Your assignment will come out of your vision. Is, there is a time that your vision translates to assignment. But your assignment should go beyond punishment. At the beginning, when you are going through some rough roads on the road of the mission and the assignment of God, you may think it is punishment. But your assignment should go beyond punishment. Your assignment should become your nourishment. Not punishment, but nourishment. <clears throat> Your assignment should draw you some ointment. Your assignment defend you from enchantment. You hear the Bible say there's no enchantment against Jacob, there's no divination against Israel. 
That's talking of a person that stays with his assignment. There can never be enchantment against a man carrying his assignment. Your assignment should draw you some ointment. Your assignment should become your nourishment. Your assignment should go beyond punishment. <coughs> your vision in life requires your obedience. Your vision requires your development. Your vision demands your commitment. Your vision requires your agreement. Mm -hmm. I take that again. Your vision requires your obedience. Your vision requires your development. Your vision demands your commitment. And your vision requires your agreement. You must not disagree with your heavenly vision. <coughs> Your vision fulfillment will need your totality. Vision fulfillment needs what? Your totality. Your vision will consume your total person. Your vision will take you all, all over or take all of you. In other words, your vision will need your spirit, your soul, and your body in cooperation together. Your vision will generate laborers. Your vision will generate workers. Your vision will translate to W O R K, work. Your vision will translate to your duty in life. Should I not be about my father's business? <coughs> Every vision has timing, time to receive the vision. Time to develop the vision. Time to start fulfilling the vision. Time to completely fulfill the total vision. <clears throat> Are you with me? Your purpose is stronger than your death. So before I go to this area, I want you to know that just like I said, your vision will translate to your assignment. In this area also, I want to say that your vision will translate to your life purpose. And once you can grab that purpose, your purpose is stronger than death. I will say it in different other ways, but it's, it's still saying the same thing. Your purpose will elongate your life. Obedience to the purpose of God increases your lifespan. Disobedience to the purpose of God can be deadly. I take that again. Your purpose is stronger than death. A man that is pursuing purpose death can take him. Your purpose elongates your life. Obedience to your purpose in life will increase your lifespan. And disobedience to your purpose in life can be deadly. It can have fatal consequences. <coughs> your purpose, when you begin to fulfill it, will generate your enemies. Your purpose will provide you new friends. Your purpose will be your source of strength in life. Your purpose will bring you joy. 
And to some people, it may be sadness to them. So now everybody will celebrate your purpose. <clears throat> but your purpose is your reason for living. Your purpose is the reason you came at all to this world. Your purpose in life is the reason why people will give towards you. So your purpose attracts your provision or God's provision for you. Your assignment will attract its own equipment. <coughs> your assignment will attract consignments. Your assignment will become your employment. And if you do that, your assignment long enough, your assignment will bring you life enjoyment. I take that again. Your assignment will attract its own equipment. Your assignment will attract consignment. Your assignment will become your employment. Your assignment will bring you soul enjoyment if you take it long enough. Because the more you keep doing it, the more that things are generated from it. Your vision is superior to ambition. Your vision originates from God. Your ambition originates from you or from around you. Your vision is always greater than you. That's why you will need help us to do it. Your vision will be so enormous, there's no way you can accomplish it by yourself alone. can handle your vision alone, it's likely to be an ambition. It's not a vision. I could take a very long time explaining each of the things I have shared with you today. But I just want to share it for now. For keep. See? Deep, 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 deep teaching. They require a lot of elaboration, explanation, scriptural backing, support, life experiences, support, and all that. But this is just what I want to pour out to you today. When we are on assignment from God, He takes the whole of our life. You can't finish it. The more you do it, the more you know what you have to do next. The more the thing keep expanding, it's your life assignment. It's not a hundred meters dash. It's like a marathon that you take a long number of days before a man finishes it. And once you start it, there's no stop. Just keep laboring and laboring and laboring and laboring. Once you place your hand on the plow, there's no looking back. For God who has called you is more than able to help. He will not call you to do it and leave you without being there with you. He's the one that called a man to do a work and will assist the man to do the work and will give him the equipment to do the work and will help the man to do it and will still thank the man for doing it and reward him for what he has helped him to do. <laughs> you understand? It's something that is so interesting. But there's no regret serving God. It's one of the greatest things a man can do in life. If you don't serve God, you've got to serve somebody lesser than God somewhere. 
That's how I'm going to not serve yourself. But none of the two can be as good as the one that is serving the master and the creator of the heavens and the earth. So it's always a great thing every time I have the opportunity to serve my God. I'm always happy about it. But I don't want to do any better than that serving the master. He saved me to serve him. And I live to serve him. There's no reason for living outside of divine service. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for another opportunity to minister your word today. For as many as have heard something and what we share today has been a blessing to them, I just pray you will help us to be able to drive more, much more, and do better than we have ever done before. As we see the day approaching, coming to the end, we should rather do much more than we have ever done before. Strengthen your people and uh, equip them the more that we may be able to do more for you. Thank you, Father, for today. In Jesus' name we pray. Until tomorrow, be healthy, be healthy, be strong. God bless you.